Hello, I'm your host, Dave Anderson. Welcome to HeliCool's HeliPad. And today we'll be talking about distance estimation and depth perception. Well, let's face it, uh, when it's dark out, our best visual uh, acuity is about 2200 uh, under scotopic vision. Uh, so we need to be able to help us uh, estimate distance uh, by using certain cues, and I'll teach you what those cues are. One of the very first things that we talk about is binocular vision or binocular cues. Now binocular cues are, it's a little bit more subjective because the brain does a lot of triangulation on its own, doesn't need any help from any other system of the, of the body other than the eyes. You have to have vision in both eyes. And what the brain does is it triangulates the distance uh, to the object because when you look at an object with one eye, and then flash over to the other eye, you see that the, that the image is slightly different with each eye. Now the object has to be fairly close because the further away the object, the slighter and slighter the distance or that angle that each eye has on the object becomes. So it really, it's only good for vision about up to about 33 meters or so, anything beyond that uh, about 110 feet or so is is just beyond the capability of, of binocular vision and then you get into monocular vision. Now monocular cues are different than binocular cues obviously because the distance is so great that each eye pretty much has the same view of the object so the brain can no longer triangulate the distance. Now Increasing your ability to estimate distance is a is learned through experience, and there are some cues to kind of help you um, realize just how far away objects are by using them in parallel with other cues that you're viewing. The first major cue that we have is really a category, and it is the geometric perspective category. Within geometric perspective, we have three different uh, items. One is linear perspective, apparent foreshortening, and vertical positions in the field. Linear perspective. Parallel lines are perceived to converge at a distance. Parallel lines don't actually uh, converge but they appear to at a distance. You can use this as a cue to estimate distance. So if the object is located where the parallel lines appear to be a little bit closer, then you know the, the object is far away. If the object is located where the lines are not so close, then the object is much closer. Next is apparent foreshortening. Objects will appear elliptical when viewed from different angles at a distance. In other words, you see these lakes here. As you can tell that the, the width of the lake is, is the same, you could, you could tell that very easily, but it appears to foreshorten um, forward and aft. So you really can't tell how far it is across that lake. It looks like it's elliptical when it actually could be a circular lake. You don't actually uh, find out what its true shape is until you get a lot closer to it flying over it at a high angle and then you can really tell what the true shape is. But you can use this as a cue to estimate distance. Vertical positions in the field. The higher the object in the vertical field, the greater the distance to the object. So you look at this truck. This truck is low in the vertical position in the field. You have a lone tree that's higher in the position of the field. You have another truck on the road that's just probably about even with it. And then you have mountains in the background that are even higher on the position of the field. You can use these as cues to estimate the distance so long as you can see the base of the object. If you have a tower, it's uh, very difficult, uh, especially if the top of it is lit, unless you can see where the base is to determine well how far away that tower is. And then the next major topic area that you have is retinal image size. An image focused on the retina is perceived by the brain to be of a certain distance. In other words, if it's small on the retina wall, it's probably far away. If it's large on the retina wall, it's probably very close up. 
With that, you have four subcategories. The first is the known size of an object, increasing decreasing size, terrestrial association, and overlapping contours. The first is known size of an object. If you know the size of the object, such as this church steeple or building that you've seen many, many times, and you see that that object is very, very small on your retina wall, then you know that that object or that building is very far away. Conversely, if it is filling up quite a bit of your retinal wall, you know that that object is fairly close. So through experience, the size of the image of a learned object cast on the retinal wall can be used to estimate its distance. Now a lot of these things are going to seem a little bit more self-explanatory, and really and truly they are. But uh, knowledge of these things will help us estimate distance much easier. Next we have increasing decreasing size of an object. If the object is decreasing in size, that means it's moving away from us. If it's increasing in size, that means it's moving closer to us. Now this pretty much uh, is good to go with all objects unless the object is actually increasing or expanding or decreasing in size. Next is terrestrial association. Here you have a black hawk flying over an airfield, an unknown airfield, but we know that the size of the black hawk, we've, we've been around it a little bit, and we can compare that known object with the unknown object, the airfield, to determine the unknown object's distance and, of course, its size as well. So it's just like if we're taking a, a, a standard pickup truck and we see a pickup truck way off in the distance out in this field. There's a bunch of people out next to it. We can use the pickup truck by the size that it makes on our retinal wall um, and it's very very small and, and we can compare it to the group of people next to it or whatever is going on next to it and we can that will help us determine the distance to that unknown area. Then we have overlapping contours. The overlapped feature is further in distance than the overlapping feature and can be used as cues to estimate distance. So if you have a vehicle that is traveling across an open field and it crosses in front of a fence, you know that the vehicle is closer to you than the fence is. Uh, and, and conversely, if it is traveling along the field and suddenly you see that the fence is in front of the vehicle, you know that the fence is then closer than the vehicle is. Lastly, you have uh, aerial perspective, and this has a subcategory, uh, but the aerial perspective is the clarity and shadow cast by an object is perceived by the brain to be of a certain distance. So the three uh, subcategories that we have is fading of colors and shades, loss of detail and texture, and lights and shadows. Fading of colors and shades. Of course, we know as distance increases from the object, the colors begin to fade. That fairing that you see, that upper fairing that's all you know, nice and orange and the tail fin of this aircraft to the left, uh, we can see that when it's fairly close, but as distance increases, those vibrant colors uh, tend to start to uh, get muted out. And uh, we, can, we can use this to help us estimate distance. The object is very muted in color. We know that it's very far away. If it's a little bit more vibrant in color, we can tell that it's a little closer to us. And we have loss of detail uh, or texture. Because visual acuity uh, becomes, you know, we can only see, you know, so far, um, objects that are fairly close to us, we have very good visual acuity with. Uh, you know, we can see details, lots of details and texture. But as the distance increases, uh, unless we have a pair of binoculars, which, uh, you know, we're just talking about the unaided eye, the detail and texture decreases uh, as distance increases, and we can use this also to help us to estimate distance and depth. And we have lights and shadows. 
The direction that the shadow falls from an object can be used to determine the distance of the light source compared to the object. In other words, if the if the shadow is being cast toward you, you know that the light source is actually farther away than the object. If the shadow is being cast away from you, then the light source is actually closer than the object. And this will help you estimate distance. And the last and most important thing we have here is motion parallax. The apparent rate of movement of an object as you, the observer, move across the landscape. So you can see the fence here on the side. As you're, as you're uh, rolling down this road, that fence is whipping by pretty fast. It's whoosh, 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 going pretty dang quick. But that tree to the left, eh, it's kind of going medium speed. It isn't, doesn't seem like it's going very quick at all. And then, of course, the mountains in the distance, they're hardly even moving. Well, that is the parallax because actually you're moving by all the objects on the Earth at the same rate of speed. It only appears as though close objects appear to be move, move faster in your frame of reference than objects that are further away. And we can use this as a cue to help us estimate distance. If object is moving very, very quick, then we know that it's very close. If it's not moving so fast, eh, we kind of know that it's a little bit further away. And in summary, we have a little mnemonic device, a BM Gram, for binocular vision, monocular vision. The first being geometric perspective with linear perspective apparent for shortening and vertical positions in the field. And with retinal image size, known size of an object, increasing, decreasing size of an object, terrestrial association and overlapping contours, and aerial perspective, fading of detail and texture, or uh, fading of colors rather, loss of detail and texture, and lights and shadows, and the last one being motion parallax. All right, so that concludes the class on distance estimation and depth perception. I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, this hopefully can give you a tactical advantage in the field. I know that it has uh, served me very, very well. Hey, this is another class uh, that you can put down on the books. Tactical Advantage Series presentation brought to you by Heli Cool Helipad. I'm Dave Anderson. You have a good day now. God bless. Take care. Thank you.